breaking this afternoon that Donald Trump fired his Secret Service director. There are questions today about the spate of high-level firings and what's behind them. Secret Service Director Randolph Allis, who was appointed two years ago, is the second person fired by Donald Trump in less than 24 hours. An administration official telling NBC News the firing was not based on any single event, but suggesting this shakeup may be a sign of more upheaval to come. Alice's ouster comes one day after Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen resigned under pressure from the president after months of tension over policy at the border. And Friday, Trump asked his ICE nominee to step aside, saying he wanted the department to move in a tougher direction. New reporting in the New York Times reports on how the sidelined officials are connected. Quote, all were viewed as allies of John Kelly, the president's former chief of staff and his first Homeland Security secretary, who left late last year after months of tension with Mr. Trump. The departures appeared to be part of a house cleaning of officials involved in the Trump administration's immigration agenda as the president demands a harder line on border security. It's worth remembering that as of now, the agency is being run by a growing number of acting officials, not confirmed by the Senate. At this hour, there is no confirmed Secretary of Homeland Security, no confirmed Deputy Secretary, no confirmed head of FEMA, no confirmed head of ICE, no confirmed Inspector General, and as of Wednesday, Customs and Border Patrol will no longer have a confirmed commissioner when the current Border Patrol chief moves over to replace Nielsen as an unconfirmed acting secretary. And one cannot separate the president's apparent state of chaos and his fixation on the southern border, which is known to captivate his base, from the looming reality that Robert Mueller's report will likely be released in the coming days. Trump firing off 11 tweets since Friday, attacking Robert Mueller's investigators and the findings their report might reveal. And that's where we start today with some of our favorite reporters and friends. Associated Press White House reporter Jonathan Lemire at the table. Matt Miller, a former chief spokesman at the Department of Justice. NBC News national political reporter Heidi Presbella. Frank Figluzzi, former assistant director for counterintelligence at the FBI. And NBC News national security reporter Julia Ainsley. Julia, I'll start with you you. This is a lot of chaos, even for a chaos president. And these are at agencies where life and death decisions are made. What is going on? That's a good question, Nicole. I mean, it seems at this point that the president kind of reached a breaking point. We know as the numbers of families crossing the border started to increase around January, his blood pressure started to build and he started to look for really tough answers. What was in his back pocket is what he did last summer by separating families at the border. And it seems, and we've been told by a senior administration official, the president still thinks that that was his best tool yet at deterring asylum seekers. And so he wants to be able to bring back a version of that. We know that the secretary uh, pushed back against that. Nielsen said that he couldn't do that because that would be reversing his own executive order that put it into family separation last summer. And that legally, the courts had already ordered the reunification of those families, so you couldn't start separating new ones. But that wasn't what the president wanted to hear. And so they continued to have many meetings over the course of months where we're told that the two did not agree. And eventually that, la that led yesterday to her forced resignation. Frank Figluzzi, it would seem that part of the problem is that the president is answering the wrong question, trying to diagnose what is for him. He, I think he's unelectable if illegal immigration goes up while Donald Trump is president. He ran on one issue. He ran on a wall. And, and, and the ruse that was that wall is that the wall was going to end illegal immigration. The fundamental problem he has is that anyone that has looked at immigration knows that it's a comprehensive solution that stops illegal immigration into this country. W w looking at this from a law enforcement perspective, how far do you think he'll go sort of down this? The, it's really a fool's errand to try to get harder and harder and harder and think that's going to solve the problem. Boy, so, so much uh, inherent in these decisions in the last uh, 24, 48 hours. Uh, so first of all, it appears that anyone who wants to tell the emperor that he has no clothes is going gonna, is gonna to get ousted. The emperor doesn't want to hear that he has no clothes. We're hearing that Secretary Nielsen was pointing out that, you know, there are legal implications and policy implications. And, sir, you'd be overriding your own executive order. 
and he doesn't want to hear it. Secret Service, similarly, we have this incident at Mar-a-Lago that clearly was not at the feet of the Secret Service, but rather part of the Trump posture on security and, and, a, and a weekend manager at a resort deciding who gets in. Yet, we see the Secret Service director out. We know that they're stretched very, very thinly. There's resource issues. So my advice to the next candidate for Secret Service Director, ask two questions of the boss. Am I going to be in charge of security or are you? <laughs> Secondly, am I going to get the resources I need to protect the nation's security by protecting you? And he, we need to stick with, with that. With regard to where this immigration issue is going, look, if he's kicking people out, uh, Nicole, who are pointing out law, and policy, and he doesn't like that pointed out, then we're left to conclude that the next people coming down the pipeline are people who have a similar disregard as he does for law and policy, and it worries me deeply. Matt Miller, I follow you uh, on Twitter closely enough to know that, that, that one of the things that triggers you is this idea that she was some sort of figure who spoke truth to power. She was frantically trying to appease the president, who was constantly pushing the envelope on more inhumane immigration policies, policies that were so far outside of the mainstream of even right-wing immigration policies and politics. Yeah, I see this idea that she's being pushed out as the ICE director nominee was pushed out for because the, the president wants to go in a tougher direction. This really has nothing to do with being tough. You know, Kirsten Nielsen was being was willing to be so uh, tough, quote unquote tough, that she was willing to dishonor herself. If you look at her record of separating families at the border, of lying about it to Congress, of tear gassing families who are trying to approach the border to, to ask for asylum, she has been pretty uh, plenty tough enough, at least by Donald Trump's uh, stretch uh, uh, definition of the word. What she was wasn't willing to do, apparently, is to defy the law. And that ultimately becomes the breaking point with him for a number of officials. I think her resignation or her firing actually looks a lot like Jeff Sessions firing. Jeff Sessions was willing to do everything the president asked of him, but he couldn't break the law for him. He couldn't just blatantly, flagrantly violate DOJ regulations for him. And because of that, that wasn't enough for the president. And that is a lesson for all everyone in the White House. It, you can do what you, know, you can do a number of things. You can dishonor yourself. You can trash your reputation for the rest of your life. You can compromise your integrity. But even that won't be enough. If Donald Trump asks you to break the law for him, to defy court orders, to do what you absolutely cannot do as a government official, if you say no, you'll find yourself out anyway. You'll find yourself fired and humiliated. So you would be better off just do, choosing the right course of action from the beginning and not caring what he's going to do to you. You know, it, it, it is this um, uh, sort of amalgamation of high-level firings, um, the, 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 the sort of the state that Steve Bannon talked about wanting to take apart, being taken apart, either through firings or, or resignations. But it also, I'm, I'm reminded of one of the candidates for chief of staff in the pre-Mulvaney, uh, post-Kelly era, who, who one of his criteria was that a defense counsel would be funded by the RNC for whatever tenure this individual served. I mean, this is, at least the candidates going in or contemplating going in view it as a potentially criminal undertaking. Right, that is a part of it here. And let's remember also, the White House declared a national emergency at the border, and we don't have. We now have an, going to have an acting head of Homeland Security. We're going to have an acting Secretary of Defense. This is something that the, the, the president has made his signature issue yet again. He was elected on this in 2016. He wants to do so again in 2020. And he is frustrated by the numbers going up. And to Matt's point, yes, part of this is the... But it's because his policies don't work. That's I right. Mean, who does he blame? He is blaming everyone. He's certainly not blaming himself. He's blaming other governments, suggesting that Mexico should do more to stop the flood of immigrants, the Northern Triangle countries, that they should be doing more. But at the same time, of course, he's threatening to cut off aid to those countries, which all experts say would be counterproductive. You know, that he is frustrated with the staff around him. And that, yes, Nielsen has pushed back and suggested there were legal ramifications to some of these things. She was willing to be tough. He wanted to be tougher. There's also the growing uh, influence of Stephen Miller behind the scenes, who is the architect of much of the, the, the Trump's immigration rhetoric and his policy. And he wants even more from that and wants to more handpick successors, as we do seem to be going through a little bit of a DHS purge right now. And let's remember, I think big picture, we have to take a step back. Kirsten Nielsen's legacy here is going to be those images of the children in the cages, those families separated at the border. But yet that wasn't enough for President Donald Trump. So what is the next, I mean, what is Stephen, I, I guess I have a hard time fathoming that, who's 
who's restrained Stephen Miller? I mean, who's held him? Who's the guardrail on Stephen Miller? He seems to run rampant. As you just said, children are separated from the arms of their parents and put in cages. Well, Miller thinks they need to go even further. I don't What's know that there's further than jailed babies. I don't know that there's a check per se on him. I think there were times where other members of the administration, you know, tried to slow him down. But you know, he has still remained in Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump's good graces as well. So he feels that the president has the two of them have a sort of mind meld, if you will, on immigration issues, and the two they believe that there's still there is more to be done, despite policies that almost anyone would suggest were very hard line, have yet to produce the desired results. And I think you hit on something a minute ago. If legal immigration continues to go up, if these crossings continue to rise, that defeats, a, it takes away a significant plank of what Donald Trump would try to make his reelection case upon. Heidi Prisbella, what has people more alarmed on Capitol Hill today? The idea that Donald Trump's immigration platform is about to get more extreme than jailed infants, or the idea that half of the uh, Homeland Security and, and, and government posts are now filled by acting officials? I think we have a list of, of all the acting officials in, in Donald Trump's cabinet right now. Um, w w which is sort of um, the cause for more alarm today? Well, I'd say that members of Congress see a connection between the two in that the purge going on, if you want to use that word, at the Department of Homeland Security and related agencies is a reflection of the president's frustration that his hardline policies have not produced the des uh, desired effect. In fact, they may be making the problem worse. There is reporting, Nicole, that some smugglers, for instance, are telling individuals from these Central American countries that now is the time to get across the border before things get even worse in terms of the president's crackdown on this type of asylum seeking. Um, and so there's a concern that there is a connection there and there's a concern of what this portends though, Nicole, because yeah, what what could be much worse than putting babies in cages? Well, be, re be returning to doing that, right? And the concern on Capitol Hill is that we've seen this president in so many different instances dare Congress to put a check on him and Congress fails to do that, whether it pertains to the shutdown or declaring the, imagine, the, uh, the um, national emergency, leaving all of these agencies without Senate confirmed appointees. There's a lot of concern about that, Nicole, because you have so many agencies now being head, uh, headed by acting officials who have not gone through that rigorous process of being confirmed by the Senate for positions that uh, were intended to have that type of oversight from Congress. So yet again, this is another instance where this president is circumventing Congress's advise and consent uh, authority. Frank Vigluzzi, about a week ago or so ago, you talked about um, alarming signs that when you, when you sort of as a profile and from your law enforcement and counterintelligence background, you, I think this was before it was known what, what the Mueller report's uh, basic conclusions were. You, 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 you know, you described some worries about um, impulsive conduct. Is, is this what you were talking about? And just remind our viewers what that warning was. Yeah, what we talked about was a possible analogy between what we're seeing in the president and, and studies of violence and acting out, particularly workplace violence. And we talked about the path, the journey and pathway to violence when we see people using language of despondency, lashing out, blaming others, obsessive, obsessive compulsive attachment to one issue and the inability to get off of it. That, in that case, it would be the border and, and uh, security on the border and, and immigration. And so are we, the question we have to ask ourselves from a behavioral uh, sense is, are we watching a president essentially on, on his way to a, what we call a flashpoint? And, and are we now beginning to see him act out in the form of purging and mass firing and completely not listening to any logic? You know, when people say to him, the law or policy is such and such, and we would be violating the Constitution or the law, and he simply dismisses it and fires people and keeps doing it. Are we essentially watching a workplace violence incident play out at the highest level of our government, and is he acting out now, and where does this go, if I'm right about that? Matt Miller, the flashpoint has a name. It's called the imminent release of Robert Mueller's, at least the obstruction report, which very clearly and succinctly says, we do not exonerate the president.
Yeah, that's true. And when you think about the way the president's behaving, um, uh, you know, quite illogically and irrationally, I mean, if you, if you look at, the, at the, this purge that's going on at DHS, I think it's likely to have the opposite effect of what he wants. It's going to make it harder for him to implement his policies, not easier. It's going to make it harder to control immigration at the border because acting officials, just by their nature, don't have the same, aren't able to exert the same influence over their agencies. People don't uh, don't follow them, the, don't, you know, don't, aren't kind of willing to, to work overboard and go the extra mile for someone's policies if they think that someone may be gone and the agency may change course in the next month. So uh, the thing that worries me, when you look at the president acting the way he is now, when, you know, about something that's not really a crisis. I mean, the, the, sure, the surge of, of, of immigration at the border is a problem. It's a problem that could be addressed if he was willing to work with Congress, but it's not a crisis. Um, and you see him actually melting down and just really kind of decimating an agency, wiping, you know, kind of knocking out the entire top tier of leadership what happens if we're ever really in a crisis? What happens if, if we find ourselves, you know, the, the victim of a terrorist attack or in a war? Uh, and that's without the, the, the added complication of the Mueller report being released and, and, you know, new questions about his leadership and whether he committed a crime. I think it's a, you know, whether this is a dangerous moment or not, it reveals a dangerous character flaw about the president that we could see again, you know, if we find ourselves in really, really challenging times. Jonathan LeMaire, the president, in his own words about what he likes about this, what Matt Miller's describing basically as a dis functional government, but he likes it this way. Here's the president on actings. Because you have an acting AG until you get bar confirmed, yes. you get an acting defense secretary, an acting chief of staff, an acting interior okay. secretary. It's easier to make moves when they're acting. I like acting because I can move so quickly. Mm -hmm. It gives me more flex flexibility. I remember hearing that one way when, when I heard it, and I just thought, you know, uh, he's just being you know, stupid human tricks like usual. But it has a scarier connotation now that we learn that, that on immigration, he wants to go in a harsher direction. I mean, I mean at a serious level, what, what is the bottom of, of the drain that they want to swirl down? Right. So two points. First, as a clarification on the Secret Service head, that seems unrelated to Nielsen's resignation, according to reporting from the AP and other outlets. That this has been in the works for weeks even predating the Mar-a-Lago security What's breach. What's that about? Uh, that this is a personality conflict, conflicts within the agency. They also wanted a career official to head, to head the Secret Service, which he was not. Uh, now, it does come amid a much larger shakeup at DHS, certainly eyebrow-raising. It seems, though, at least in the early reporting, this was in the works prior. Uh, to your question here, the acting thing is something how Donald Trump always works. He wants to have chaos around him. He did so at the Trump Organization. He did so on the campaign. We know how quickly he churned through staff there and now in the White House too, where he feels like if people are acting, they would be that much more loyal to him to act on his whims because it'd be that much, he believes, easier for him to dismiss if they give him any sort of pushback if they try to tell him no. And that's what he is. We've seen time and time again as this administration has evolved is he has little to no patience for anyone who dares stand up to him from the West Wing or elsewhere in the administration. He wants to have people who just will embolden him, who will play into his instincts. And in this case, that's telling him, despite polling, despite counsel from other Republicans, to go even harder at the border. Julia Ainsley, the building you're standing in front of has the other half of this um, immigration um, calamity. They were the DOJ and under uh, Jeff Sessions' leadership announced the zero tolerance policy and they were in charge of trying to uh, put it back together again. Any react there from the news that the president's going to go harder line? Is that in line with AG Barr's views on immigration? So it's interesting, Nicole. I mean, A.G. Barr just released what he'll go over in front of appropriations committees later this week. And he does talk about the need for funding from the Justice Department budget to go after things like hiring more immigration judges, which is something people from both sides of the aisle agree to because it just speeds up the asylum process for people who have a claim to asylum to come here and get those protections. But I did specifically ask my sources whether or not Barr was in the meetings at the White House about reinstating family separation. And I was told that he was not there. I mean, these meetings started before he was even confirmed, but that so far he hasn't dipped his toe into this pool in the way that Jeff Sessions did. And we know that when Jeff Sessions was here, people on his staff were the architects behind what became zero tolerance. And it was Sessions himself who announced it. At this point, it's not clear that Barr will go to that same place. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.